Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay Hero, and I want to say welcome to Heroic Futures. We are excited to be here today to talk about things that matter most to us, and I'm sure to you, which is you, yourself, uplifting you, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, and all those amazing and brilliant things. Uh, so before we officially get started, I want to take the time to just go over a few rules um, for the event. Uh, so some expectations or some gentle reminders rather uh, is to make sure that when you're not speaking that your mic is off, uh, except for questions and you know things of that sort. Uh, have your paper and pencil handy. Um, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, you, if you're if you feel a little hesitant about speaking out, you know, with your video or over the mic, you know, feel free to uh, use the chat to your you know to your leisure. Uh, this is a respectful space, so all parts of you are welcome. Uh, all parts of you are welcome here. So we want to make sure that we affirm you, that we affirm um, just who you are as an, as an individual and your, your visions, your dreams, and all of those things. Uh, so there will be a time for questions towards the end of the practice, uh, towards the end of the, of the event. Uh, so if you have any questions for the our guest speakers or really anyone here, uh, there will be time afterwards, after the event, or towards the end of the event for questions. Uh, there will also be a brief survey. So we would love for you to stick around after the event to just, you know, stay on board, to fill out just a few questions so that we can get your feedback so that we can know, you know, how we did and if we made an impact on you and, and all of those things. So we, we, we wanna make sure that what we do here is effective and is, is impactful. So I'm, I'm really excited to get started. And uh, so moving forward, I want to take the time out to uh, introduce or to the, uh, everyone to introduce themselves. Um, like I said, my name is Jay Hero. I am the, uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be your, co your host today. Um, and I am the founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization named Hero Nation. And our mission is to help young people like yourself discover their, their inner heroes in comic books, video games, and superheroes. So we are excited about this opportunity here today uh, to help empower you and to uplift you. So I'll pass it on to the next person here. I'll jump in. Thank you, Jay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming on a Saturday. We so appreciate that. And it's going to be great great stuff you're going to hear. And we have two wonderful speakers. We're excited and grateful that they're here, Dorfis and Greg. And I'm Kristen Gapsky. I'm the director of the Entrepreneurship Center at Washtenaw Community College. And what we do is support people at any age, any stage of business, any type of business, even a nonprofit or a social impact business, um, or a for-profit business with uh, learning how to get out there and grow those businesses or start those businesses. Um, so I think Aaron just put our web address in. Thank you for that, Aaron. And I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Jay for leading us today and for collaborating with us on this event. It used to be called Bold Futures. Now it's Heroic Futures, which we're super excited about. Um, and thanks to Katie here. She'll introduce herself in a minute. Um, and Tyler, who's not here today. I think Katie will mention who he is and from Eastern Michigan University and how they're involved. Um, and Erin Ellie on our team here who will introduce herself maybe next after me, if that's okay, um, because she's from the center too and she's done a ton of work on this. So thanks everybody, we're excited to be here. Hey everybody, I'm Erin, I'm a manager with the Entrepreneurship Center as Kristen mentioned. And thank you to Jay and everybody here and for collaborating on this project. And we're really excited to be here today. So I'm really happy to be part of it. So thank you. And thank you to Kristen, our director, for all of your hard work on this project and all of your hard work in the center. Um, so, so I'm a resource coordinator, too. So if you have a business idea, um, we work with anybody at any stage of business, even if you have just a couple different ideas to work through. We have resources and tools to give you to help you work through those ideas. So we're happy to work with anybody at any stage of business. And with that, I will hand it over to Katie. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I'm Katie Avila. Uh, before I get started, two uh, disclaimers. I spilled water on my microphone a very long time ago, and so if my speaker booms, I sincerely apologize. Um, I did not turn into a robot, although that would be really cool. It did not happen. 
Um, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one is that I am a little under the weather, so um, I might cough a little, but um, I'm in my own room. I'm quarantined. <laughs> and so I am from Optimize. Uh, Optimize is a social innovation and entrepreneurship organization. Um, I am at U of M, but we do have a chapter over at Eastern, um, and it would be um, terrible of me not to mention just all of the work that Tyler Calhoun um, over at Eastern um, has put into this. This is a collaboration um, between the three of our colleges and uh, Hero Nation, as uh, Kristen mentioned. And so we are here to support you. Um, Aaron beat me to the punch. Um, you can learn a little bit more about Optimize than what we do on our website, but just to give you an overview, um, we help students change the world. We believe in student-led and youth-led change, and um, you'll get uh, sort of our, one of our big sessions later this afternoon. Um, but we basically have students ask themselves if they could change something, and, and what would they change, and turn that into an idea or a project, and, and go from there. And so you'll get the opportunity to, to do a little bit of that today. And um, I'm joined by a handful of folks from Optimize at U of M, um, Jeff and Zion, you'll get to know very well this afternoon, um, and Jenny as well. So um, I will let someone from Optimize go next. Hi, my name is Zion. I'm from Optimize, as was previously stated. I'm a student at the University of Michigan, and Optimize helped me a lot with my project. I had a project that I presented to them. They help a lot with entrepreneurship, and my project had to do with comic books and seeing everybody as a hero. So I'm excited to be here today, and I'm excited to empower others to see themselves as the heroes that they can be and that they are. I'm going to pass it over to Jeff. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Sorensen. I'm the director of Optimize at the University of Michigan, and uh, I'll tell you more about myself later. But for now, just really glad to be here with you and, and looking forward to the sessions that are coming up. So who has not introduced themselves yet? Jenny, maybe? Jenny is introduced in the chat. <laughs> um, so I will uh, pass it over to whoever is uh, whoever's up next. Greg, feel free to go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Greg Anderson Elise. I am one of the guest speakers uh, for today. I'm very excited to be here. I am a comic book writer. I've been working on my comics for about almost five years now. Been doing pretty well, and I'm excited to present today. Thanks for having me. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dorothy. I'm also another presenter. Uh, I am a war history teacher and also a comic book creator, and I'm happy to be speaking to you all. So to get started, like I said, my name is Jay Hero. Um, I am the founder and creator of Hero Nation. Um, and so what we do is help empower young people using video games, comic books, and superheroes. And so to get us started and kicked off in the appropriate manner, I want us, I want you to try to figure this out. So can you guess who this hero is? This hero is? Can anyone guess? And I'll give you a hint. Created by Len Wein and David Cockrum in 1965. Yes, congratulations. I kind of like to show y'all the answer already too. But yes, the answer is Storm or Ruru Monroe. As I said, she was created by Lynn Wynn and David Cockerman in 1965. She is descended from a long line of African witch priestesses and serves as a powerful member of a popular superhero team, which, of course, are the X-Men. So you get a one-year subscription to Marvel Unlimited. <laughs> good job. Good job. All right. So to get us warmed up for just the day, I want us to start these initial conversations. I want us to talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a hero? Would anyone be interested in sharing their perspective? I can start. So for me, being a hero is not about being a savior. It's about being a servant. And I think the first person yet you must come to serve is yourself. 
you must learn to, you know, you have to learn to serve yourself as a person, as a, as a, become your own hero. And then you can learn to extend that to other people once you be, become empowered by your own life. Who else would like to share? No, and there is no wrong answer here. Well, being a hero is also being selfless as well. Um, yeah, you're basically helping people. Um, putting yourself, putting your 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 life at risk. But you know, uh, heroes can be defined in different ways. You know, uh, children can be heroes, and um, you know, babies can be heroes. Anybody can be a hero. It just depends like what in, in different scenarios. What have you or what meaning have you bring to that person's life? So that's my perspective on hero, being a hero. Thank you, Dorfis, for sharing that. I appreciate that. That's a beautiful perspective. Would anyone else like to share their perspective? Being a hero, I agree with what you originally said, is um, being a servant, especially I grew up in a Christian household and Jesus said the greatest amongst you is the servant. And seeing that being a hero isn't all caked up to be the person who's necessarily in the spotlight, although you can be a hero in the spotlight but is the person who I would say has the mo most amount of selflessness and is willing to even put themselves in the background for the greater good of other individuals. Thank you, for, thank you so much for that answer. I definitely agree with that too. Uh, yes, and these are also wonderful answers. Uh, does anyone else have any, you know, again, there are no wrong answers. Being a hero is, is multifaceted. You have your own perspective as to what a hero is because you're a unique individual. So you're allowed to have your own opinion as to how it applies to you as a person. So feel free to share. Or if you don't want to share in the, through, via your voice or your, your microphone, you can drop it in the chat too. And that's okay. I appreciate that. Yes, that was a wonderful answer. Uh, and it takes courage to share. So you were just, you had a hero moment just right then and there because you had a bit of courage to share your answer. So I want to affirm you right now. Um, so, all right, so one time for one more answer, then we can move forward to our next exercise or to our first exercise. So hero ideation. So we talked about what does it mean to be a hero? And so in this exercise, I wanna work with a bit of mindfulness and meditation and visualization to help you understand, to help you get more in touch with your heroic identity. Now, this is something that is, if you're not familiar with mindfulness or meditation, that's okay. We can, I'm going to help guide you through it. But essentially, again, hero ideation is the practice of imagining, of imagining, uh, I think I made a typo, yourself as a hero using visualization exercises. And so basically, it's the, the, the practice of using your imagination to imagine a more empowered, imagine yourself as a more empowered, empowered version of you as your, your hero self. And so today we're gonna to do that through a, visual, a visualization audio exercise. And so if you're familiar with audio books or if you've ever listened to a podcast, it's kind of something like that. Um, but before I begin there, I wanna ask the question, is anyone familiar with mindfulness or has anyone done meditation at all by any chance? It's okay if you haven't. Okay, well, if you haven't, we're gonna to start today. So let me actually stop sharing my screen. And if you're able to, I want you to sit tall in your chair. If you can get in a quiet space, you know, if your little brother's behind you making noise, just tell him to be quiet a little bit, you know, I know how that is, <laughs> or your sibling. But if you can get in a quiet space, I want you to roll your shoulders back. I want you to sit tall in your chair or cushion. And I want you to close your eyes. So with your eyes closed, one, two, three, inhale and pause, two, three, and exhale, one, two, three, four. Take another deep breath, inhale, pause, and exhale. Now I want you to just sit here for a moment. 
and just pay attention to your breathing. Now you might feel or you might experience thoughts or sensations or all kinds of interesting things regarding your, you know, your mind and your body, but that's okay, that's all normal. What I want you to do is try to pay attention, use your breathing as an anchor. So we're gonna do this for just a couple more minutes to get us started. Keep your eyes closed. Get your mind ready and prepared for the day. Okay. Now we're gonna go through this hero ideation exercise. And like I said earlier, it's sort of a form of an audio book versus meditation. And you're gonna still keep your eyes closed, uh, but it's a form of meditation versus visualization. Uh, that you can still pay attention to your breathing, still pay attention to all the sounds around you, pay attention to your, to your, to your uh, imagination. I want you to, to pay attention to all those things. So as, you, so as you're going to do this exercise, as I said, be sure to engage your imagination and listen closely. And I, I'm be curious, I have questions for everyone afterwards. So I wanna make sure that as you're going through this, you're paying attention to your body and to your thoughts. So to be in the moment. Here we go. Your journey begins in a dark, unfamiliar space. Surrounding you is an abyss of whispering shadows, except a stone path beneath you, urging you forward. The path is cold and harsh against your bare feet. It's uncomfortable, but you persist. Ahead towards the end of the path, you see a growing speck of light. Its glow illuminates the space, revealing a cave full of shadow creatures. Shifting, gnawing, hateful things. While some creatures hung against the rigid walls and roof of the cave, Others quickly surround the light as if to guard it, but even the shadows couldn't completely contain its brilliance. The creatures whisper, You are not worthy of this light, they say. Give up, they shout, but something still compels you forward and you continue to walk toward the light. Stop! Something grabs you and pulls you into the darkness. You try to break free but are seemingly powerless. Then with a sudden display of strength you release yourself and hit the ground. The hard earth scratches against your palms and knees as you struggle to stand. You've lost your way and are surrounded by darkness. Suddenly, the light appears again, this time much closer. Its glow exposes the hidden stone path. You quickly rush towards it, but the shadow creatures aren't far behind. Finally, as you reach the path's end, you behold the light in its full brilliance. You are worthy, it says. Don't give up, it shouts. You extend your arms, reaching out to touch it, but the shadow creatures grab you again. This time, you have the strength to resist. You continue to reach out to the center of the light, further, more, until your fingertips graze its rays and you feel its soothing warmth as the sensation trickles up your arms, shoulders, then to your torso, your legs, feet, and toes. Finally, it reaches your neck, chin, lips, nose, eyes, until it touches the tips of your hair. You become light, the best version of you, a hero, a source of wholeness, strength, love, kindness, hope, and will. As your body changes, a new form begins to manifest. With this new power, you face the shadows and you overtake them. As the darkness descends, you find yourself sitting in your room resting comfortably in your chair or a cushion. Breathing, calm, you are complete, balanced, and at peace. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes. All right. So again, that was a hero that was called hero ideation. Uh, so to help wrap up this exercise, I have a couple questions for everyone. And I want to know your thoughts as, as to what you experienced throughout this visualization exercise. And as I said, visualization can be a lot of things. You can create your own script. And this, and this is what I do when I'm having a moment where I feel a bit where I'm struggling with emotions and feelings of powerlessness. I use the hero ideation to help me 
feel empowered, to help me to imagine myself at my goal, to imagine myself sort of like visioning is using that sort of concept, but with super, but you're but imagining yourself as a hero. Uh, and so I'm curious to see or to hear everyone's reaction to the practice. What did you hear or what did you experience? What emotions did you feel? Um, I myself, I felt uh, like a, a calmness, a reassurance. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Jenny says she felt, uh, I said, Tom is in the chat, I felt compelled to keep going. Um, so the biggest moment, or for me at least, the biggest moment of this hero ideation is when you transformed into the, you were transformed by, by the light into the hero version of you. So what did that transformation look like? What does the hero, what does your inner hero look like? What do they sound like? How do they act? You know, do they have a certain deep voice or something like this? Or do they talk like this? I don't know. You know, whatever the case may be, it's, it's entirely up to you. But what does your inner hero look like? And who are they? Tell me about them. What did you see when you transformed into your hero when you're transformed by the light? And I'm loving these comments, by the way, by Chris and I felt 20, 20 feet tall. Uh, Jeff said, I was surprised by how much I felt like I was in the space with the shadow creatures. But yeah, what I'm curious to know, what does your inner hero look like? What do they sound like? Describe them to me like they're an actual, like they're here, have it on this Zoom call with us. Or are they? So moving forward, I want us to get to another part of our exercise, the concluding part of our exercise, where we could sort of create a tangible sort of thing with what we just experienced. Um, so let me share my screen. So up next is called a hero statement. So for your hero statement, it identifies the following. A hero statement, first of all, is a statement of purpose that identifies who you are, what you believe, who you serve, and what you feel called to do. So again, you know, all those things identify hero statements. So for example, I, so, for, for, so for today, I want you to write, work on a hero statement. So an example of this is my name, for example, for me, is me, J Hero. I believe everyone can be their own champion. And I feel called to help youth discover their inner hero. So what I want you to do in the next maybe couple minutes or so, is take your time out to write your hero statement. It can be very simple. It can be just a couple of sentences. And I, this is the structure that I want you to follow right here. So my name is, I believe, and I feel called to, and, and identify who you call, who, who you're being called to serve and what you're being called to do for those who you are serving. Okay. And we're gonna work on it. We're gonna share those towards the end of your of the event so hang on to your hero statement and i want you to work on it if you feel like you don't have the answer right now that's okay but i want you to work on it throughout the rest of the event okay all right so up next uh we have our special guests uh so greg Elise, anderson elise and dorfis uh, uh jean will be presenting with us today uh, and they are um, two amazing comic book creators. Because as I said, we, we want to help empower you all. And you know, the, the intent of you being here is to help empower you, the comic books and superheroes. And they are two amazing comic book creators who have created uh, amazing works of art. So Rafis created the Spirit's Destiny Universe, among uh, other amazing things. Uh, Greg uh, created uh, Is Nana the Were Spider, uh, which, was, which is a, an amazing story. Uh, and again, both of these are talented creators, and I'm very excited to introduce them here today. All right. So, uh, hello. I am Greg Anderson Elise, as I said earlier. And um, as Jay said, I am the creator of Is Not of the Wear Spider. I'm going to share my screen to, uh, for my presentation. All right. So, uh, this is my comic book, Is Not of the Wear Spider. It is based off of the stories of Anansi the Spider. If you are familiar with Anansi the Spider, he is the god of stories in West African uh, folklore and mythology, as well as well known in certain parts of the Caribbean, like Jamaica, Trinidad, and a few other spots. And um, I have been working on this comic series for about five years. 
now I'd say we just reached the five year mark uh, a few weeks ago, which I was very excited about. And essentially, it's I like to say it's a it's a horror fantasy coming of age series about um, is Nana working with his father and Nancy to stop these various creatures from causing chaos in the world while trying not to drive each other crazy at the same time. And I, what I really wanted to do with this series is use it as a way to introduce people to more black mythological gods and heroes. Uh, Cause you know, in school, it's not really required for us to be educated on them. It's usually the Greek gods and European fairy tales and so on, which I'm still a huge, huge fan of. I still love those stories. I still buy books on those, but um, I realized there was definitely a difference when uh, we were required to learn all this stuff since we were kids. And I was only able to really learn these as uh, electives for college. You know, like that was a choice for me to, to pick up on some classes, but I didn't really have, um, it wasn't required. And I just thought it, it was a, a little weird. I, I thought it would have been really cool for me to learn about some of these figures. And um, uh, it's Nana, he has a lot of different abilities, spider abilities. Of course, everyone thinks Spider-Man. Obviously, he shoots webs and uh, climb walls. But I thought it would be cool if we had like a, a character who literally taps into various spider looks and he can turn into like a, a were spider, a half man, half spider. He could communicate with different spiders and read through uh, webs because there's like hidden meanings behind webs as well. And given that his father is the spider god, you know, he should be able to tap into a lot of uh, mysticism. I thought was uh, be pretty cool. And one thing as well, not only just uh, black gods and heroes that I really wanted to cover throughout the series, I also wanted to showcase just various black cultures as well. Um, for example, one of the things of, of art is dancing. I thought it would be cool to have is not to tap into a lot of uh, black dance, the hip hop culture and certain elements as well, as well as uh, showcasing his relationship with his father, who, while he is a spider, he is a, a black god. And one thing that I realized growing up, uh, being a fan of fantasy and horror and comics, for the most part, we really didn't get um, loving uh, father and son, black father and son moments. And there, there's a couple you'll find, you know, if you really dig deep, you'll find a couple of those moments with uh, certain characters. But that's the issue is you have to dig really deep to find them. And so I really want to see what I can do with is Nana and um, his father and, and showcase that sort of uh, loving relationship as well as showcasing is Nana throughout the series, developing uh, wonderful relationships with uh, different types of people as well. So, uh, Little backstory of some of the stuff that inspired me growing up, um, especially falling in love with heroes and things of that sort. I think everyone at some point had a Batman phase. I was absolutely obsessed with Batman ever since I was a, a kid. I had toys, I had the comics, I have all the movies. Uh, I may not be as huge of a fanboy as I as I was as a kid, but I still have that love and appreciation. I love Two Face. He was one of my favorite. He's still one of my favorite villains. Um, yeah, so Batman was definitely one of the things that started it off for me. And we know him. He's this. He's a human. He's supposed to be a human, human being who's using his mind, his body. He's training himself to like some crazy um, peak you know physical fitness thing even though it's really <laughs> it's really unrealistic when you actually uh, think about it and the fact that he's going every single night lack of sleep just beating up these villains and sometimes they're these super super powered uh villains but just what he stood for of, of just being this man who did not want people to suffer the same fate that he had um you know as a youth you know he really stood for justice and I think that was also very admirable. Like we really looked up to that. And to this day, we still sort of look up to him and think he's one of the greatest heroes um, in existence. And uh, aging myself a little bit for some of y'all, I was a huge Power Rangers fanboy as well. I still get extremely hype 
uh, about Power Rangers. I definitely wanted to be one when I was younger. And um, Hercules and Xena, if you guys don't know, was a huge, huge, huge obsession of mine um, when <laughs> these came out. And as I said earlier, the Greek mythology was definitely something that I love to this day. And so this show was definitely like the beginning of my love for mythology as a whole. Uh, both of these shows, they had a couple of uh, crossovers, but they all took their stories, their their gods and heroes from various Greek mythology stories, and they just turned it into something else just to showcase what they can do. And I remember um, thinking, you know, who are some of the Black gods then? Who, you know, who do we have in all our various Black cultures? And so this, I would say this was one of the precedents to my creation for It's Not of the Were Spider. I was also fanboy of X-Men, all the mutants. I feel like if anybody ever felt like an outsider, whether it was uh, their race, their sexuality, uh, gender, whatever it was, I felt like X-Men definitely made you feel like it was cool to be an outsider because you were meeting other outsiders as well. So what else? And uh, this is my very first comic book that I've ever bought. I saw a commercial of Superboy when I was younger. It was a, it was a really corny, really <laughs> terrible commercial, but that was enough for me to be like, yo, he looks mad cool, who is this guy? And then when I stumbled on a comic shop and I had a couple of dollars, the first thing I asked for is I want a Superboy comic. So this, this book right here is literally the reason why I am here today. Why, <laughs> you know, since then, I've been writing these fantastical stories. I've been spending a lot of money I should not be spending on comic books. And now I'm spending that money on making comic books. And it's, it's always interesting to find everyone's backstory as to who it was that inspired them, what book inspired them, who represented a hero, even if it was visually, who looks like the hero that you, um, that really that, that grabs you that makes you want to actually fight that makes you want to make a difference and so on so all those various uh figures that i showed you before if you notice for the most part none of them quite reflected me as a black person and i i feel as if um me as a black kid uh we get so we we get used to the hero looking a particular way and we don't really second guess it because it's just like, that's the default, that's the norm, that's what we see, you know, and bringing, going back to X-Men, you know, one of the first times I saw a Black hero was Storm, that we see uh, right there in, in the all-white, and she was awesome, you know, not even was, she still is awesome, she's one of the greatest uh, comic book heroes of all time, but it really wasn't until I got introduced to this character, Bishop, that I realized, holy crap, I really don't notice Black heroes that way and uh this guy was a uh total badass i would say excuse my french my fault um but he seeing a character like him really meant something to me because i never saw another like black male hero who was just as cool as all the other white guys that was on the show and to the point where if i wanted an x-men book i would not buy that dang book unless bishop was in that book you know because i felt like yo he represents me you know, this dark skin, this black guy who's just as good as the other heroes um, walking around, you know, just, you know, beat people up, whoever stood against him and, and what he was fighting for. And as uh, time went on, I started discovering other black heroes like uh, uh, Black Panther as well as Storm. And funny thing with Black Panther, I initially as a kid did not see the interest. I, I didn't understand what what people saw at all uh, he just seemed I don't know he just seemed very weird and corny until I actually started um, finding books that black people were writing um, of Black Panther when, when black people started writing the comic I wanted to check out what they were doing and I realized just how awesome this character was and that's something that I started to realize when it comes to certain characters and the way uh, heroes are represented when it's uh, marginalized uh, characters, we tend to look at them in a different light when they're written by the people from that, that they're supposed to be based off of. You know, um, 
Black Panther was created by uh, white people. It wasn't until he started getting written by black people that we started to see the character elevate. Uh, we started viewing him in a completely different light. And uh, that that seems to be the norm for a lot of our marginalized uh, heroes. Spawn was another one I was obsessed with. And uh, he is another black hero. And he was, I, I'd say he's more of a horror type of character, which reflected my love because I love horror. My mom introduced me to horror. So having a character who was a lead in a horror comic is something that you're not quite used to seeing too much. You'll probably get Spawn, you'll get Blade. Aside from that, there's really not many. And uh, Dr. Voodoo, who I hated as a kid because I thought, why would they make the one Haitian superhero this uh, weird looking voodoo piece until I started to realize, wait, uh, he's actually pretty cool given the fact that uh, we're so used to African traditions being represented in an evil light, unfortunately, because of Hollywood and, and um, colonialism. And this was one of the first times that I got to see in a pop culture, a hero who was using African traditions as a way to beat the bad guys. And that's when I started to realize a lot of a lot of negative connotations that I've had with certain uh, black blackness being represented. Um, I sort of started to dismantle them a little bit. And uh, one thing that I mentioned earlier as well is the fact that uh, a lot of these heroes were created by white people and they're owned by white people. You'll probably get some black creators once in a while dipping their hands in just to give them some nuances. Um, but it isn't until we have like popular characters like Static Shock, who is a static really, the show is called Static Shock, who is owned and created by black people. Even though DC publishes the static comics, behind the scenes, the, the people who own this product are black. And just to showcase that no matter like who you are, you can own whatever story that you're making. You don't have to, um, you know, put it out there and, and lose the rights. But we are out there. You have you have a voice no matter what marginalized group that you're in to tell your story. There's one of my favorite writers of all time, Toni Morrison. Uh, she wrote something that said, if there is a book that you want to read but hasn't been written yet, you must be the one to write it. And that is a philosophy that I take with me um, practically every single day. You know, I wanted to see more Black representation, whether it was from horror, fantasy, sci-fi. And given that, yes, there, there are some of those books out there. They're not as common as you see with... Um, with white characters or, sh or uh, straight characters, especially me wanting to see more queer representation. I just was like, I'll just do it myself. Essentially, you know, I'll find people who have the same goal. I'll bring it to life, you know, and um, uh, this is for me. Anytime there's a movement of people of color or non-hetero or women being presented as equal, suddenly it's a political statement of sorts. It's political correctness. To want to be part of it and to understand its value is to be a, a social justice warrior. And I don't know, people use, call people a social justice warrior as some type of insult. But to me, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. That's what we want. That's what we strive for as heroes. We want social justice. And it's unfortunate that anytime there's a representation of anything that is not white, straight, male, it's seen as like there's some type of weird agenda. You know, that's, it, it's a it's social justice warrior to, to want that. But it's like, okay, well, all right, cool. Then if that's the case, then all my works will feature you know, the marginalized uh, folks in the media and call me a social justice warrior. I will gladly take it. And I would say that would be uh, one of the ways that that I fight for social justice, just to showcase, you know, that we are equals. We don't have to be the other. We don't have to be the side characters. And it means a lot for a lot of people who are not used to representation. Um, you sort of serve as a hero because they finally feel like they belong. They feel um, like they're not strange anymore. The more we see something, the more desensitized we get from it, and the, the more that we uh, normalize it. And I feel like that's what I try to do in my work with Is Not a Wear Spider, as well as uh, some of my other works like uh, The Gentleman, 
Marasa, which is uh, supposed to be like a multicultural uh, sci-fi series. And in the end, it all comes down to having to change the narrative. You know, you, you want to change how people view us as the other. Um, who else but you, if you're not going to write your book, if you're not going to write your stories, if you're not going to do your art, no matter what field of art that you're involved in, um, if you're not going to do it, somebody else somebody else either will or they will not it will not be produced um unless it's you so uh last couple of advice i would give is uh if you want to be a creator then create if you want to write write if you want to make art you know make your art nothing will be done unless you actually do it a lot of people like to say oh i have this idea I have this idea but then it's like all right so where's the idea what happened and those ideas linger on for years and years and years nothing is done so do not let a week pass by without working on your craft. Aim to set aside 20 minutes a day just to work on your project or skills. A lot of people say, I don't have any time, but finding 20 minutes, just set a timer, 20 minutes a day. By the end of the week, you have something. By the end of the month, you have something. Research, learn about your craft, read, learn new skills, who came before you, and what are issues that are happening that can showcase, that you can showcase and shine a light on. Don't be afraid to share your work, gather thoughts, criticisms, what is working, what's not working, how can you improve, what are uh, people enjoying, who can help you take uh, your next step with your work. Do not, of course, once again, do not be afraid to create. That's what we're here for. We are creators. We're here to shine a light and change the world. All right. So uh, with that said, I will wrap it off there. Thanks so much, Greg. Uh, up next, well, for one, that was profound in a lot of ways. Uh, and so I'm sure y'all have some questions uh, later on, but uh, I wanna get right into Dorfis' presentation. So Dorfis, take it away. Okay, guys, how are you guys doing? Uh, my name is uh, Dorfis. I am uh, I'm good. a comic creator. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. I'm a comic creator. I am from Miami, Florida. Um, I've been in the industry for about almost five years. I've come in, I came out with at least, uh, I believe, four books. I'm actually working on a couple of um, comics right now. Uh, let me play my presentation now. Can you guys see my screen? Because, uh, okay. Yeah, I can see it. Cool. You know, I wanted to add a little razzle-dazzle here. <laughs> this is my, my, my first GIF. Uh, I made my first animation. Okay, um, this is my first comic book, Spirit. Uh, I created Spirit. My inspiration with Spirit came from one day taking my son to the comic book store, and he's a big Batman fan, and I don't like Batman. Um, yes, uh, I don't like Batman as much. You know, I like his animation movies, but but uh, he loves um, Batman, and he loves Teen Titans. So he collects comics just along with me. And these are my contents of some of my books right now. Um, issue three is the first one, Nia Kegler, um, Spirit's Destiny 2, the variant cover and the regular cover right there. Um, I want to, I have a few questions I want to answer, like, um, how does your role as an independent comic creator intersect where social justice and why is it important? Well, social justice, um, first of all, we want, everybody wants representation. We all want to be, um, you know, we want that that moment, you know, you, from my point of view, I wanted my own moment. Okay. Because I am a woman in the comic book industry and this, in every industry is, you know, run by men. Okay. So it's hard for a woman of any race to actually step into an industry full of men, because we have to prove ourselves. We have to work as much harder and we have to be in a comfortable state where you can be very respected. OK, as you guys can see, it's hard for a lot of uh, female superheroes, you know, to get through the push to the door because we grew up with uh, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. OK, and just like what Greg um, stated, X-Men was one of the reasons why I really got into comics, because they basically told you you can be who you are and who cares about it, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, when you wake up, you think about yourself and what represents you to make yourself happy. You know, uh, that was my initial goal was creating. I wanted to provide myself an opportunity 
to show everybody how um, creative my mind can be. Um, I wanted to have a voice, you know. Uh, I went to the comic book store and I asked them, I said, do you guys have any Haitian female superheroes? The guy told me no. And the one of the things, the biggest thing that this guy told me, and I will never forget because I still shop at this comic book store, he said, go create one. And I, you know, I, I, at first I was going to take offense to it. I'm like, I'm like, so you're right. So uh, from that day forward, you know, I, I decided to create my character. And um, it's a, and I want to uh, actually show, you know, show people about why I love my uh, culture so much because I am Haitian and I wanted people to know more about my culture. Like, you know, when people go on, uh, watch the media, we are viewed as the ones that just do voodoo and stuff. Now, there's pretty much more to in for the Haitian culture where we're funny people. You know, I know I, I know I'm hilarious. Um, we're strong. We're humble. And, you know, and I want to display that within my comics. And also we have a lot of historical figures. This is the reason why I'm, I'm writing so much comics based on our culture. And just like um, Greg, he has a lot of uh, folks who are um, based on Haitians. So and many people like that. So um, as a social science teacher, I want to bring some history into my comics. And I want just to show everybody that everybody should have an opportunity. You know, we all should have a voice, no matter if uh, you agree with it or not. Now, you know, I spoke about my moment. This is, uh, I want to speak to you guys about Nia Kaler when it came to, uh, when it came to representation. Nia Kaler is based on my best friend. My best friend is from the military. She's a military brat. And um, she's also a lesbian. You know, I'm like, I wanted to create somebody uh, who is very authentic. And um, a few teachers bought my, my my comic and they said there's middle school and high school kids love it because at the, it's it's authentic. It's, it, it displays them. It represents them, you know, um, from the scenery because school has changed so much. So what I uh, what I, what I see, it's what I write. OK, that's I write from my point of view. And sometimes the kids also help me. So I always give the credit kids credit. Um, they enjoy when I uh, write comics, they enjoy writing, reading my comics because I bring it to school as well, you know, for entertainment purposes. So um, when it comes to social justice, I just feel like everybody deserves equal economic, political and social rights, you know, um, no matter what race, sexuality, ethnicity or gender. OK, we all deserve a voice and we all deserve to um, present that message. Now, what's the next one. Here's more pages. This is uh, my newest comic, Spirits Destiny 3. Um, I just uh, dropped it in May. Some pages right here. Okay. Spoke about my culture. This is another historical figure that I am. This is my next comic book that I'm planning to drop probably the end of this month. But uh, his name is Makanda. Makanda was known as a um, during slavery time, he's one of the people that actually uh, took initiative to fight against um, the French soldiers. Uh, he actually uh, taught the Haitians how to poison their masters. Um, but he was eventually caught um, what was told in stories books where he was burned alive. And I'm like, I want to create him as a hero because at the end of the day, he's a hero to the Haitian community. Um, he made a very big impact. You know, um, he was he was um, fearless. So I uh, uh, created him as a hero. I've actually um, hired a few uh, Haitians from Haiti. You know, even though they're going through their hardship, this uh, this book right here, they were so happy to work on it. So um, I and they were, and I thought this was be would been a great opportunity. And also, Greg is also editing this book as well. So. Um, that's the best thing about being an independent um, creator. You know, you can hire whoever you want to hire. You don't have to go through a publisher where you have to actually uh, work with the people that they appoint to you, you know, and, and you're, you're free. There's no, uh, no clause or none of that. Like you're not withhold of, from creating. Okay. You're not going by what they want. You're doing things that, you know, excites you. So, the next question, what were the first steps you took to implement your vision? Well, the first things you guys got to do, which is very important, is creating a plot, okay, before you begin. Um, this book right here, 
Understanding Comics, the, indivi the individual art by um, Scott McCloud will help you understand the whole essentials of writing comics, guys. Um, for instance, the, the main objective of the plot is to um, outline. I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first started, I did not outline. And this is, was a very big killer for me because outlining your comics from the beginning to the end is very important. Now I do it now because it's much easier for me. But I used to just freestyle and write. <laughs> I would just freestyle and write. I'm like, okay, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And I was I didn't have anything in chronological order. So now that I do this, it's much more easier for me. And I can write uh, in a much more effective way. Sometimes I might take away from the plot. But so the plot is obviously the groundwork of a comic book, you know, or novel, where the character and settings are based on. Okay. Um, the introduction of the stories, where the characters and, you know, setting on settled you know um secondly the rise in actions happens when numerous um events occur to create um conflicts within the story is very important okay so uh basically you guys gotta ex ignite excitement for the reader so make sure to make sure they don't lose interest so in issue one what i did i killed off the main character you know it was very risky but i'm like I wanted to know what was going to happen next. So what I did, I, I, I started writing the outline. I'm like, okay, this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. And as a reader myself, I want to continue to level myself as a creator, but I wanted to, I was writing, writing my comics as a reader because I want to keep people, uh, their interests. I want them to keep them interested when it comes to um, buying my comics. Okay. Um, the best thing about um, writing is the cliffhangers. You know, cliffhangers are my favorite because it keeps the readers at edge of their seats because to this day, people are asking me, okay, what happened? <laughs> what happened? And when they got issue three, they're still asking me what happened? What's going to happen next? So um, I did provide you guys uh, with the comic. Um, you guys got to think. I'm going to cut you off. I just want to say we have like about a minute left. Okay, no problem. Um, another thing I want to let you guys know Um. If you want to be a comic creator, just do it. Do not let nobody hold you back. Um, get into the design, start writing your plots, figure out your, your, your character's name, you know, start Googling. And um, don't let nobody uh, or anybody um, stop you from um, creating. That's how, I, that's how I, um, I started off. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Greg and Dorfees, for those amazing presentations. Uh, again, uh, some profound material here that you know that will hopefully help you inspire and create your own vision. So, really quickly, I want to make sure everyone is actually in the chat. All right. So, before we move forward to the next part of our uh, event. Um, I hope your hero statements are going well. I'm pretty excited to hear what you got. Um, but I want to jump into our next giveaway opportunity. So who can tell me who this is? So let's guess that hero. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Katie and the Optimize team uh, so that we can get started with the next part of our event, Visioning. Yes. So um, I am feeling so inspired. Um, I My superhero was like 20 feet tall and had wind blowing in her hair. So I'm so excited to see where this visioning exercise takes this hero of mine that I've created. Um, and so much of, of some of the things that folks have shared, you know, about um, the write the stories that you want to, to read and you know, who else is going to do it if not you? So much of that resonates with Optimize and why not me? Um, and so we're going to take you through a visioning exercise. Um, actually, I will take no credit for this whatsoever. Zion and Jeff will take you through a visioning exercise um, to basically help you write your story, write the vision, write the, um, you know, the, the future that you want to see your hero um, working in. And so with that, um, I will pass it off to Jeff and Zion. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, so, Zion, I'll just do a little intro to optimize and then toss it over to you for the visioning session, if that sounds good. OK, gotcha. And I'll just share my screen here real quick. So uh, 
My name is Jeff Sorensen. Um, I'm the director for social innovation for the University of Michigan College of LSA, um, and also the co-founder of an organization called Optimize that we'll tell you about in just a second. But Zion, do you want to introduce yourself briefly as well? Yes, my name is Zion Helms. Um, I'm a student at the University of Michigan. I'm in my sophomore year, and I'm co I co-founded a business named. Well, actually, I founded a business named Supernatural with the help of Optimize. And that is a, um, a comic book company. We're getting our first comic book out here soon. Absolutely. So uh, we're just going to take a minute here, if everyone wants to do this with us, um, to first of all, tell you a little bit about Optimize and get you in the mindset for writing your vision, uh, which Zion is going to lead. So as just a brief overview, um, Optimize is a constantly evolving attempt to help students turn ideas into impact. And so the way we do that is by creating a really supportive student-led community where uh, students can identify the things that they'd like to change in the world and then figure out how to actually do that in a tangible way and build skills and projects to do that. So we offer workshops and mentorship and a chance to get funding to support those projects in the way that Zion has for developing uh, her business. Um, we also run one of U of M's largest and fastest growing community college transfer programs. So our work with Washtenaw Community College has been hugely helpful on that front. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to doing more on that in the future. But um, to get you a better sense of what this is really about and for us to understand kind of where you're coming from, uh, both the students and the, the staff members and the guests in the room today, uh, would love to just kind of dive into the first question that we always ask with Optimize, which is, if you could change something in the world, what would you change um, or in your community or in your life? Um, and maybe you feel like you can't change it right now because you don't have the right skills or you don't have the power to do it. But if you could, what would you like to change? Um, so we're just going to do something called free writing for a few minutes here um, where you just open up a document or a, take a piece of paper, whatever way you want, and just start writing and just once you start writing, just don't stop. Just let yourself keep writing and just see what comes out. And just write on this question for a little bit. If you could change something in the world, what would you change? Um, so we're going to take just like two or three minutes to do this. Um, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. All right. That's probably good. So now what I'd love to do is, uh, you know, open up some breakout rooms and just have some conversations about what is it that we've reflected on, on something we'd like to change in the world or things that we'd like to change in the world? Um, and, you know, I'll just emphasize that, you know, if you're the speaker or the listener, you have a really important role. So, uh, you know, it takes some courage and vulnerability to share the kinds of things that we'd like to see change in the world. And if you're listening, be sure to really be present and be active and encouraging uh, with the person who's sharing so that they really feel like, you know, you're, you're supporting and validating the courage that it takes to share. It's something that they'd like to change. So. So today, guys, I'm excited to be presenting visioning. So visioning is a really great activity, especially for what we were just talking about, about what you want to change in the world. Uh, visioning is a great activity for who you want to be as a person, a business idea, any entrepreneurial idea, any idea, even if you work at a corporation in the future that you want to do. So by the end of this session, you should understand the purpose and process of visioning. So you should be able to um, redo this activity, you know, in the future, if you feel like doing it. And you'll have a written draft that can help you clarify your motivations and actions. Um, so this, to me, is what's most helpful about it. With a written draft um, and this exercise, as I explained it, you'll see, you'll be able to really see your true motivations and your visions for any project or anything that you specifically want to do. And when you have an idea of your motivations and your visions, you'll be able to communicate them to other people. So stakeholders of whatever your projects are or teammates in your projects, or even if you're doing a visioning activity for, you know, issues or personal things that you're doing in your life, you could even do this activity and explain to people or your loved ones um, what you see happening in the future and what you'd like to see. So visioning can be a, a pretty, pretty good activity. So for this workshop, all you're going to need is two to three sheets of blank paper and a pen. I would choose a pen over a pencil because a pen is more permanent. 
And I think visioning is something, this activity is something that you should keep for the long haul, um, even to look back on. And, or you can just do it on a blank, a blank sheet of paper or a, um, on your computer, on your desktop, um, Google Docs, any of those notes, whatever you like to use. And of course, you'll need 20 minutes of focused attention, which is something that we all need after the age of COVID and the age of Zoom and being here on Zoom. So first things first, we'd like to thank our partners at Zingerman's. Zingerman's is a very successful business located in Ann Arbor. Um, they make great food, they're a restaurant, and you can also go to zingtrain.com. And I actually checked it out. They have a lot of courses for new entrepreneurs starting a business. And I think you should listen to them because they have a very successful business. So clearly they know what they're doing. So if you want to know more information about visioning or any of their other courses, you can go to zingtrain.com. They taught us how to do visioning. There you go. And if you come to Ann Arbor, you should definitely try Zingerman's. Uh, two things that a vision is not. So one, it's not a mission statement. A mission statement is forever where a visioning statement, as you go on in life, things may change. You may see a vision is different than it was in the past. And I believe that's a good thing because our vision should evolve as we're evolving as people, as our goals are evolving and we're learning more as individuals. Um, a vision is a specific moment in time. So in this activity, we're going to pick a specific day and year in the future and right from that day. Personally, I usually pick my birthday when I'm turning 30, because sometimes it scares me how fast time is moving and it sort of gives me a sense of urgency, like, oh, I need to get my life together. But you can pick a day and time in the future and you're gonna write as if you are literally in that day and what that day is looking like. Two, it's not a specific plan. So this vision is not like a GPS, step-by-step -step directions, turn on this street, turn right on this, you know, it's not that, which when you think about it makes sense because if you're visioning a specific day in the future, you really don't know the specifics of what's going to happen, the plan to get there. You don't really know any of that. Um, I believe one thing that's helpful in life is to somewhat go with the flow and let life happen as you're working your hardest because life doesn't always go as planned. It usually never goes as planned. So this is not a strategic plan. This is a vision. Yeah, so like I said, you're going to pick a day and year in the future and you're going to write in, in present tense. So as if you're waking up on this day, you're there, you're living it, you're breathing it, you are right there in that day. Make your vision feel real. So I've read a lot of visions where people are talking about the sounds of the birds on the trees and they're, they're very specific Um they're getting into their car, the seats are warm, you know, whatever. Make it feel very um, real. Just like that activity we did at the beginning of this event, which was we were hearing the man talk about where you are and how it felt real, like we were actually there and imagining yourself as a hero. Make it feel real so that when you re read this in the future, you can actually... Um, feel like you're there and maybe almost get back into that feeling like you're a kid again. You know, when like you're a kid and you're very imaginative and you're thinking of things and it feels like you're there. You want to make sure vision is real because if it's not real, if it doesn't make you feel real, I mean, what's the point of even writing it down or reading it even in the future? So an example of this is, have you ever gotten lost in a book? And um, I know I have. Uh, so especially when we're talking about comic books, most people here are comic book lovers and really enjoy comic books. So you want that writing, your writing of your vision to make it feel like you're getting lost in a book. It should be very true to you and it should be very real to you that so much so that you get lost in it and you can really see it and see where you want to be in the future. So think about the elements of writing that make that happen. What is great writing? What do you want to embody when you're writing this? Um, yeah. So some features of captivating writing. Use descriptive language. Again, like we said, make this feel real. Paint a picture with the scenery. So use descriptive language. Actually describe what's going on. The th what are the things that you enjoy in life that you really see? Captivate yourself. Um, 
set a scene, painting a picture. Where are you? Are you walking along the river? Are you in a coffee shop? Are you in your home? Are you driving down the street? Are you at a park? Engage your senses. What are you seeing, hearing, touching, smelling? So again, these are things that make it seem like real life. Um, these are skills that great writers have. And engage your feelings. Um, so what, what are you thinking when this is happening? How do you feel with the things going on? And um, make small details and those small details usually come together to be the bigger picture. So you wanna point out things that are small, but that all come together in your vision of the great day that you're having, the great day, the great things that you've accomplished and the great things that are going on that are all encapsulated in the small details. So of course you might be thinking, how do you begin your visions? These are the elements of a vision. They have to be inspiring. So again, when you're reading this in the future, you actually want to feel inspired by this. You don't want to read anything really and you want to be bored. We've all been to school. We've all read something that's really boring. Usually that's required. If you were me, you probably didn't read it and you just looked up the spark notes and <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sometimes that worked for me, although I don't advise it. But if that thing was inspiring, if it sparked something in you, if it made you want to do something, it was probably more captivating and you probably got something a lot more out of it. I'm sure you know some, something or you know someone or you have this for yourself where you've read something and you still remember it and you've read it a while ago and those things still ring true to you. So you want to write something that's inspiring so that you can be your best self. It has to be believable. So, you know, don't write something in a day where you, I don't know, turn into a a tree. I, I don't know. I don't know. It has to be believable. Okay, guys, <laughs> don't, don't make something that you, there's no way that you're going to, you're not going to shape shift into Bill Gates. So you shouldn't write about Bill Gates. You should love yourself and write about yourself in a specific day and time and make it believable. Documented. So that's why we want to write this down on a piece of paper. I said with a pen, of course you can do pencil, um, but something that's documented that you will always have so Google Docs, I mean, automatically saves, Word, anything like that. And of course, pencil and paper. Communicated. So you want a clear communication of what it is. You want the vision to be clearly communicated and you want it so that when you read it in the future, you will know what's going on. I know I have a habit in my writing where I'm just talking on and on and on. And even in my speech where sometimes I'm talking on and on and on, and even my mother who has known me and my speech patterns for 19 years would be like, Zion, what are you talking about? So you don't want it to be like that, but you wanna be able to read it and see that it's inspiring, believable, it's documented and you understand what's going on. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take two minutes and we're gonna make a list of everything that we have gratitude for and that we're proud of. So this is, ex this is important because this will help you before you start your vision. And I just think it's an important life principle for you to know what you're gracious for and what you're proud of. So this can be anything. This can be experiences, animals, your pets, um, routines, things that you've done in your life, people that you're grateful for. So you can, you're really allowed in this activity to think outside of the box of things that you are proud of. Um, routines, again, is a big one. If you're a very consistent person, if you're a hardworking person, things that you can think of like that. So we're going to take two minutes. Um, I'm going to make that timer and I'm going to tell everybody when the two minutes is up. You'll probably be able to hear it. Uh, So for this, you should, again, have a piece of paper next to you. And I'm just going to give like a, a couple seconds for everybody to get a piece of paper and a pen. Okay, so we're going to start that two minutes now. All right, so I don't know if you guys can hear my timer, but it has been two minutes. 
So now that you have that list of what you're grateful for and what you're proud of, we're going to move on. Now pick your date. So what day in the future will you be writing this vision from? Um, what specific day in the future? I recommend that you not pick, you know, tomorrow, not to do that, but to pick a date that's actually, you know, like in the future, future and write from that specific time. So please put it in the chat when you have it, what your specific date is. Oh, and yes, what Jeff put in the chat, don't write about a gloomy day. Don't write about a negative day. We're writing in a day, right, that's going to be inspiring. So you want to write in the future as if you're happy, things have been going really well, you've accomplished a lot. One of the reasons why we made that gratitude list so we can really see the hero who's in us, what we've done, um, things that inspire us on that list. So we want to write things that are possible, of course. Okay, guys, so now we're going to move on in the activity, um, which is write these five letters at the top of your, your page or your document, your Word document. Um, so this is what you're going to title it. You're going to write draft. So this means don't overthink it. Don't think this is the end all be all. Um, don't freak out about it. This is a fun activity that is going to reveal things about you to you. So it's not, you know, we're not performing heart surgery here and nobody's going to die, but this is a draft. You can edit it later. Again, just like the slide said. So to make sure that visioning is what it's supposed to be, which is visioning, we use the hot pen technique, which means once you start writing, don't stop writing until the time is ended. So if you're writing and then you're like, oh, I don't know what to say, like, it doesn't matter. You just keep writing and things will come to you. Um, things will come to you for what to write. And that's the best part of the activity because as they do, you sort of learn what your actual vision is. If you're like me, you think about your future pretty routinely, but when you run out of things to think about, that's when your vision actually comes to life because you see not what you think about on a daily basis, but what you don't think about that you actually want to happen in the future. So we encourage you to please, 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 once you start writing, don't stop writing <clears throat> because that's a key part of the activity that's a key part of the exercise. And that's really how you get the most out of it. Um, me personally, that's my personal testimony. That's when you get the most out of it. And you'll be surprised. Things will come to you and you'll think, oh my goodness, I didn't know that. I didn't think of that. So final reminders, set the scene, um, paint a picture of where you are, use descriptive terms, engage your sen senses, include your feelings. Um, again, you want to be feeling good, um, but really get in there in the nitty gritty of how you're feeling. Use the present tense, be positive. This is not a R&B music video where it's raining and you're looking out the window when you're sad. This is a happy, happy, happy day and um, things are going your way. And again, once again, final reminder, please do not stop writing. Hop in technique, you wanna keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. So it's time to write your draft. I'm about to start my timer. Please make sure you have that pencil and paper next to you, a pen and paper and, um, or your document, whatever you're typing on. 